Look, casting is everything in a movie. Get it wrong and the rest of the film can be derailed no matter how good the writing or direction might be. But get it right and you've got an indelible all-timer character on your hands and maybe even an Oscar-winning performance. But sometimes movie studios and filmmakers will deliberately cast an actor in a role intended to throw audiences off and keep them guessing a big reveal, be it the untimely death of an A-lister early on, an actor known for their villains actually playing the hero, or simply distracting audiences from a twist hiding in plain sight. In each of these cases, the casting announcements made sense and garnered plenty of excitement, only for the filmmakers to flip the scripts and use the actors in a totally different way than from the expected. So with that in mind, I'm Wilf Culture, and here are 10 movie casting choices that were total misdirection. Number 10, Brian Cranston, Godzilla. It's fair to say that Warner Brothers knew exactly what they were doing when they cast Brian Cranston in a seemingly lead role in Gareth Edwards' 2014 Godzilla. With Cranston's hit series Breaking Bad concluding mere months before the film was due to release, the studio was clearly banking on the hype of Walter White vs Godzilla to put the butts into the seats. In actual fact, Cranston's casting was a bit of a bait and switch, as he dies almost exactly one third of the way through the movie, after which his son Ford is revealed to be the the stealth protagonist. Given that few could have expected Johnson to be handed the responsibility of carrying a 160 million tentpole, Cranston's involvement was clearly an attempt to warm the audience up to the actor in the first act with a heartfelt sob story, while guaranteeing a certain amount of buzz based on Cranston's popularity alone. Presumably, Warner Brothers wasn't convinced Cranston would sell tickets with teenagers though, so of course, he had to end up handing the movie off to his dreamboat son, to the collective disappointment of just about everyone over the age of 17. Number 9, Ben Kingsley, Iron Man 3. Fans rejoiced when the brilliant Ben Kingsley was cast as Iron Man's iconic comic book foe the Mandarin in Iron Man 3. Given both his Oscar winning chops and the fact that Kingsley's casting would seemingly avoid any potential potentially iffy Asian stereotypes associated with the source material who posed the greatest threat to Tony Stark yet, and with an actor as statuesque as Kingsley in the role, it was easy to believe it. But as it turned out, Kingsley wasn't playing the Mandarin at all, but rather an actor stooge, Trevor Slattery, who was employed to act as a proxy Mandarin, allowing the supposedly real Mandarin, Aldrich Killian, to operate undetected. And while the Mandarin twist left many fans outraged, it was at least a clever subversion of audience expectations based on an actor's prominence. Number 8, Drew Barrymore, Scream. Drew Barrymore was featured extensively in the marketing for Wes Craven's classic horror satire Scream, being given the most prominent placement on all of the movie's posters, while the trailers implied she had a starring role equivalent to that of her co-stars. Given that she was by far the most famous member of the cast, it was pretty reasonable to assume that she was at least a major character, if not the final girl herself. However, in an expectation-shattering twist, Barrymore's Casey Becker appears in the film's very first scene and that's it. Casey is Ghostface's first victim in the movie, and Barrymore lasts a mere 12 minutes of screen time before making her exit. Though it might have been a disappointing move for Barrymore diehard fans out there, killing off the film's most noteworthy cast member in the very first scene set a precedent of unpredictability which carried throughout the remainder of the movie. Number 7, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Terminator 2, Judgment Day. Though this might be hard to believe nowadays, back when Terminator 2 was awaiting release, James Cameron made pains to keep a firm lid on the precise nature of the cyborg characters played by Arnold and Robert Patrick. In fact, a sinister early teaser trailer for T2 quite brilliantly played off Schwarzenegger's terrifying villainous performance in the original Terminator, implying that the sequel would see another T-800, again played by Arnie, sent back through time to stamp out the human resistance. Of course, T2's great twist is that Arnie is playing a benevolent T-800 this time round, while Patrick is actually the advanced T-1000 Terminator sent back through time to murder John. It's fair to say had T2 been released today, its big conceit would have been ruined for everyone during production, yet pre-internet it was far easier to keep spoilers under control, and only in the film's final marketing push was the big reveal given away. Number 6, JB Smoove, Spider-Man Far From Home. One of the greatest strengths of the MC 
MCU Spider-Man movies has been their diverse and eclectic casts, and so fans were overjoyed when Curb Your Enthusiasm's brilliant J.B. Smoove was cast in an unspecified yet apparently major role in Spider-Man Far From Home. This quickly promoted speculation from countless fans and outlets that the hilarious Motormouth Smoove would be playing a contemporary, rebooted version of the Daily Bugle's editor J.J. Jameson. In reality, Smoove ended up playing Julius Dell, Peter Parker's teacher and one of his class's chaperones through Europe. Hilariously, he was cast in part after the filmmakers enjoyed his chemistry with Parker in an Audi commercial made to promote Spider-Man Homecoming two years prior. But the true genius of Smoove's casting is that it got people so tangled up in speculating about him possibly being Jameson that they totally forgot about J.K. Simmons, who of course made a jaw-dropping return as Jameson in Far From Home's mid-credits scene. Number 5. John Berthnall, Wind River The casting of the brilliant John Berthnall in Wind River raised quite a few eyebrows when he didn't appear in any of the movie's marketing. Between his curious absence in the trailers and the fact he'd just played a murderous creep in Sicario, not to mention Berthnall's general deference towards playing bad apples, it seemed likely that he'd end up revealed as the movie's shadowy serial killer, if the glove fits, right? In fact, Berthnall only appears in the film for a single scene, and he's a good guy. Even more bizarre, the scene is a flashback, which ends with Berthnall's nice guy being beaten to death for attempting to prevent the rape of the film's focal murder victim, Natalie. Better still, Natalie's actual rapist and murderer is a random nobody called Pete, played by relatively unknown character actor James Jordan. Hiding Berthnall from audiences definitely helped perpetuate the belief that he'd be the third act big bad, so this was a clever misdirect, especially for a first-time director. Number 4. Janet Leigh, Psycho Janet Leigh already had more than 30 feature film roles under her belt when she starred in Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho, and audiences quite rightly assumed that her character Marion Crane would be the movie's protagonist. Fitting all the bills of a prototypical Hitchcock leading lady, blonde and beautiful, audiences of the time were totally reasonable in assuming she'd be facing off against a crazed killer for the entirety of the movie. However, in perhaps the first notable instance of a decoy protagonist bamboozling viewers, Marion is killed less than halfway through the film, stabbed to death in one of the most iconic movie murders of all time. The rest of the movie shifts the perspective to Marion's sister and boyfriend Sam Loomis, who arrive at the Bates Motel to investigate Marion's whereabouts. Casting the gorgeous starlet and plastering her face all over the marketing only for her to last barely 45 minutes was a bold move, and one that paid off brilliantly. It kept audiences on their toes and likely helped prevent them from guessing the film's real twist, that motel owner Norman Bates was the killer all along. Number 3. Sean Bean, Flight Plan while it wouldn't be fair to call Sean Bean typecast, he is best known for two things in his movie roles, playing bad guys and dying. And so when he was cast as the airplane pilot in 2005's Hitchcockian thriller Flight Plan, where Jodie Foster's daughter goes missing mid-flight, most audiences believed they were being set up for yet another villainous Sean Bean reveal. However, though the film isn't particularly good, it does smartly toy with the audience's perception of Sean Bean, because as it turns out, his character is just a totally normal, regular guy with no ultimate ulterior motives whatsoever. He only doubts Foster's protagonist because, you know, her story does actually sound pretty far-fetched out of context, and there's no proof supporting it. Once she's proven to be telling the truth at the end of the film, he even soundly apologises for not believing her, and better still, actually survives the movie. Number 2. Tom Skerritt, Alien Before Tom Skerritt appeared in Ridley Scott's 1979 sci-fi masterpiece, he already had almost two decades of acting work under his belt, and despite not being quite as established as actor co-star John Hurt, nevertheless received top billing on the movie's posters. Skerritt, of course, played Dallas, the captain of the Nostromo, and audiences quite understandably assumed that between his fame and rank on board the ship, he was to be the protagonist and probable survivor of the horror movie to follow. Though Scott's film initially focuses more intently on the ensemble cast than any one character or actor, Dallas does seem to be the hero of the piece at first, until he becomes one of the Xenomorphs' victims midway through the movie. Movie. After this, Ripley is left in command of the Nostromo and assumes the protagonist role for the film's remainder, ultimately ending up its sole human survivor with the cruise cat Jones, of course. As such, positioning Skerritt as our archetypal hypermasculine hero was a perfect bait and switch, allowing 
Weaver to fill the void in his absence and deliver a surprising, star-making performance in the process. Number 1. Steven Seagal – Executive Decision Back in the mid-90s, Steven Seagal was at peak popularity as a rising action star, hot off the success of Under Siege. And so, when he was cast opposite Kurt Russell in the 1996 action thriller Executive Decision, as well as receiving top billing and having his face plastered across most of the posters, audiences anticipated a Seagal-led genre romp. Hilariously though, Seagal doesn't even make it inside the hijacked aircraft, with his Lieutenant Colonel Austin Travis sacrificing himself at the end of the movie's first act, much to most viewers' slaw-jacked surprise. The death of Travis came so abruptly that fans have theorised ever since that a production or scheduling issue resulted in Seagal's role being reduced last minute, yet more recent reports suggest that he simply did the role as a favour to the studio. Either way, with the film releasing at a time when Seagal was untouchable on the rise badass, seeing him ejected from the plane so unceremoniously was a major shock. Thankfully, the rest of the movie is still trashy fun, even if those who turned up largely on the basis of Seagal's presence, likely most of the audience, were surely left baffled. And there you have it folks, 10 movie casting choices that were total misdirection. Feel free to drop this video a like if you enjoyed it, and give me a follow on Twitter at YouSlyDogU. Also, feel free to swing on by WhatCulture.com for daily news, lists, articles, quizzes, and all that other funky internet stuff. I'm Will for WhatCulture, thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you next time.